jigging is the way to go today at the moment. Finally get a fish. We've been hours and hours fishing, basically pocket casting, looking for these holes. Uh, it's much a bit more coloured uh, further upstream. We've come downstream and the clarity is much better. I've lost, well, one big perch I've lost. He bust me off uh, right in close. And uh, you lost, uh, you had one take the sprat. He took a whole sprat, yeah. didn't he? I mean, there's big perch in here, but do you know what? It's really, really tricky to find them. We have been, I've lost a lot of gear in the snags. That's the, well, they, the, the downside of river fishing. The perch cut you off on the concrete, didn't it, the one it you did. lost? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this isn't huge, but... I wanted to just talk about this white jig that I'm using. This is a jig I've been using. It's one of the ones from uh, HTO, the Tronics Pro Runs. It's not like a shad with a paddle tail. It's kind of like a twitch. So you just, it, it's like a wavy motion. You just let it drop and it flutters down really, really well. And that's on a seven gram jig head there, um, which might seem a bit barbaric and quite heavy, but it's not because it's a fast flowing river. I need this jig to get down near the bottom quite quickly. However, guys, it's river fishing. You can snag really easily. So I might go for a weedless option, but you know, I've lost a big perch and I've caught a nice perch here. I think I'll stick with it for the moment and just look for those pockets. Well, I've had a few bumps and I found basically small fry near the surface. I've actually been casting at the fry because they've been moving about. And I watched them go down to the right downstream and I just thought I'm going to keep following this shoal of fry, casting into it, letting the jig hit the bottom and just standard slow jigging tactics which work really well in here in the UK. And bang, I was into it and the rod folded over and I've definitely got perch of the day in the net. What a beauty, took yeah, me under the weeds. Right, Good fish. Guys, the lure's fallen out. I will show you it in a minute, but not a bad perch. Jig, jigging is the way to go today at the moment. You tend to get a lot of small perch in the summer. Um, it's just a numbers game really, but in the winter they tend to fatten up. So this is actually pretty good perch to get in the summer. Down here on the river, the conditions are nice. The clarity is good. It's warm. We've had a little bit of rain, but not too much. But the river's looking fresh and so are the fish. And one of the things you do when you're jig fishing is it's almost like match the hatch with fly fishing. If we've got really clear water in this new spot that we're at and I can see lots of small roach, small dace and things like that. Now obviously pike eat roach, they eat dace. Perch eat small fish as well, minnows and things like that. So the lure that's been working at the moment, colour wise, is not too dissimilar from a kind of dace. It, it's, it's not as uh, silver and shiny, but it's got that kind of white underbelly and that brown dark uh, at the top near the fin. And just looking down over this bridge, it's lovely, lovely clarity here. I can see there's a good amount of uh, bait fish, of fairly big roach as well. Um, and there's obviously minnows as well. So it's all looking pretty good perch conditions. And I'm looking at how fast they're moving and things like that, so I can get an idea of how fast I'm gonna jig. But if you just look to my left, down there, we'll pan the camera in a minute. Actually, right below me, there's some fish as well. Real good pike-sized baits, those. But it's nice and it shows a good healthy river system. I've been in the weir pool. Goes to show you've got to keep roving. Jigging is a moving method. Don't stay in the same place for a long time. Six to eight casts. 
pop it on the bottom. This one actually chased the lure, then went away. And if they do that, cast straight back out there and try a different retrieve, maybe a slower retrieve or even quite a fast, aggressive retrieve. But try ideally to hop it near the bottom. Lovely looking perch, fin perfect. And look at the colours of those fins, those orange, blood orange fins. And again, that jig doing the damage, working really well. So before we go on to the next area that I'm fishing, I just want to talk quickly uh, to you guys about the tackle that I was using in the video. The reel I was using is a 4,000 size reel, and actually I had mono on, monofilament on in the video, and that's because it was a slightly different spool I had. I just didn't pack my one with braid, but if I'm jig fishing, generally um, I will use braid. It gives you better bite detection. There's less stretch in it, so when you're striking into the fish, you're more likely to get a better hook hold. Um, however, obviously I was using mono, those guys of you out there that don't use braid, you can see in the video that I was catching perch on monofilament, it's fine. However, the braid is definitely better, it gets you out of snags as well if you've got your lure in a snag, you're more likely to get it back because it's tougher. Um, so uh, usually I would use 12 pound braid, so I got blue braid on this reel, uh, but this is the reel I was using, the rod is, and I'll tell you, a 2.1 metre, uh, fairly lightweight rod, it's 10 to 35 grams which is quite strong for perch fishing. Normally I'd use something around the kind of 10 to 20 gram range. Um, sometimes I use my ultralight stuff, but when I'm jig fishing, I generally want something quite tough, uh, especially because I was on a slightly bigger river than I normally fish. If I got into snags and things like that, um, you know, and I hook it to a pike or something, I've got a much more power behind the rod uh, than I use for my kind of ultralight setup, which I would use for drop shotting and things like that. Let's get onto the lures. Okay, so this is just a few of the many lures that I have, um, but I'll just show you sort of basically the main types of lures that you can use for jig fishing. So, uh, what I did really well on was these HTO ones, and they're basically called a stick bait. And the reason that they're called a stick bait is because the, they're basically like a stick. Uh, very popular with the American kind of uh, bass fishing market stick baits. So it's not really a paddle tail or a shad, it's just a thin tail, and it generally tapers down. So it's fat near the, the uh, head end where you would put the jig, the jig head in and then it tapers down to a small sort of thin stick size. And that's what I was using re to really good success in the video. I'll just show you a range of the stick baits that you can get. There's another one there and that one's much more of a obviously fish imitation. You can see they're very similar but this one actually has the eyes and things like that. But again, if I hold them that way you can see that they taper down to a small. They've got a lot of tail movement. Um, and actually when you jig them it's very erratic whereas a paddle tail will go in the direction that you jig it with this one when you jig up and let it fall it can go you know in all different directions so it can really switch the perch on here's another example of a stick bait this is more of a worm looking one um, and actually this has an integral rattle in it you probably you might be able to pick this up and that rattle in there there's a little ball in there in a tube and that again just helps entice a bite. But again, another stick bait, slightly longer this one, so maybe 10 centimeters I'd say, um, but much more supple. The tail section on that, if I hold them like that, the tail section is much lower, so you'll get much more movement from this one. You've also got your kind of worm stick baits as well, your standard sort of worms. This is a fish, fish action one, so it's really super stretchy. And you've got your fish imitation ones as well, which is, this is kind of like a sand eel stick bait. Um, and this one again is almost like a ragworm really, it's like a small worm, earthworm. Again, this is another stick bait. I did really well on these stick baits in that session, uh, but I prefer to use something about six to eight centimetres is my favourite length, so around about that size. And the colour obviously I did well in the darker colour, and I did catch on the white as well. So that's my range of stick baits here. Uh, now you can also use shads. Uh, which are basically like a paddle tail. They have a they, they have a paddle here so that they swim for themselves when you wind them in constantly. If you just do a constant retrieve, this tail will paddle and paddle and paddle and it sends off a vibration and it just wiggles to the side like that. And obviously it acts as a swimming fish. It imitates a swimming fish. These are very, very popular um, actually in winter as well. I, these are very effective in summer, but also in winter. And actually over here in the UK, we do what's called slow jigging. So I'll show you in a minute what that is but here's an example of some of the shads that I have um, I've done well on this one that kind of pink underbelly to it the reason I've done well is because it looks like a natural fish with that pinky kind of color you've also got these ones with bits of glitter in them again for added attraction you've got the 
ones that imitate a fish. Things like this actually imitate, you know, a small kind of fry and they've got that holographic material un underneath as well which gives some shine to it. You can also get shads that are ribbed or spiky um, and that again just adds uh, added detraction by giving off more vibration the way the water passes through the ribbed section of the lure just gives it a bit more vibration. And then you've got your kind of bright colour ones, this is an, again another fish, fish action one um, and some of them have stiff tails, some of them have really supple tails but either way there's a number of different ways you can fish these shads um, here's a good one from Nomura, uh, real minnow looking one, this is actually called a pulse minnow and I've done really well on that as well. This has a super, super supple tail. If you look, if I hold that vertical, that tail just sits over like this. Now the way you would fish these is, there's different ways of fishing them. Um, if I do an example with this one here, I'll just put, pop a jig head on it. I'm just going to show you with this jig here, uh, a different way you can fish them. Over in here in the UK, uh, with perch fishing, especially in the winter, you do what's called slow jigging. And all that involves is, uh, you've got your jig head here, this is just a 12 gram jig head, um, simple sort of ball jig head that I'm doing a demo with. But what you do is actually you have the, rather than swim this and paddle, pull it through really fast, pull it through the water so that the tail paddles, you actually just hop it on the bottom. So your line's coming off up here, so it'll be at a slight angle the hook and it'll be facing, the hook point will be facing down to the ground and the tail of the fish will be facing up. And you just literally hop it a couple of centimetres each time. This tail, meanwhile, as you hop and you lift and hop like that, this tail is uh, paddling all over the place, giving off that attraction. But what it means for a perch is they like to obviously attack the lure from above. They attack their bait fish as well. They like to come down on their prey um, and they see this movement in the bottom. It stirs up the mud and the silt on the bottom of the riverbed. So it gives that initial attention for the perch. But by hopping it like that, this perch thinks he's here. He thinks it's an injured fish or a fish that's not looking and rooting down into the, the riverbed, bang, takes it from the top, and hopefully you've got a perch on. But yeah, slow jigging in the UK is very popular. Just hop it a couple of centimetres, wind in the stack, hop it a couple of centimetres, wind in the stack, and that can be really, really deadly in winter. So I'm just gonna show you how to hook a lure on a jig head. Now it sounds really simple, and it is once you get the hang of it, but there is a bit of a knack to it. What I tend to do, I've got my jig head here, I've got my lure here. I face my lure, basically that way, you go in through, obviously your jig, you want your hook like this. So it can help sometimes by having, just matching up your hook like that. So you know that your hook has to go in that way to then curl around and face up so it's out the top of the bait. So what I do, go in through the nose, about the middle of the way through the lure. You don't want to go near the bottom or near the top, it will come out too thin, right in the middle of the lure. And just, if you feed, rather than push the hook through, if you feed the lure over the hook, it makes it a bit easier and you're keeping that hook point straight as well. And this is a bit of a knack, but you'll come out at the right point eventually. It's a bit of an art to it when you practice it. And this has a kind of uh, extended section to the jig head here to help pinch your lure on, and that just stops your lure um, slipping off, basically, when perch take it. So then you push that over this point there, make sure it's all flush to the jig head, and there you go. That's hooked, that's ready, ready to swim. Jig heads like this are really easy. You can use weedless ones, but jig heads like this are really easy to just tie your line straight into the eye of the jig head there, and you're ready to go. And you can also use a snap swivel if you're using a small wire trace or something like that for um, pike. Much like the lures, the jig head market can also be an absolute minefield. So I've got a range of jig heads here, half of which I probably don't even use, guys. Uh, the ones I was using in that video were this kind of jig head, just a cannonball or just a ball jig head. Um, and this, I was using it in about 7 grams, I think. This is a 12 gram one. So this is more for weir, big weir pools, uh, reservoirs and things like that, or generally sea fishing as well. Um, but you can also get ones that are, are coloured, you know, with a, with a fish head as well. There's a bright orange and yellow one I have there. Fairly big hooks. These are almost sea, well, they are sea hook size, so they're like 2Os, 3Os, 1Os and things like that. And then you go down to your sort of size 4s, size 2s. Um, again, another one with with eyes and things like that. I did well on the black one with a white eye, black jig head with a white eye. Uh, unfortunately, I lost the last one of that in the snag, the last one I had. But I do tend to prefer these ones with a face on them. Just makes it look a bit more fish-like. This green one is actually a floating bead. There's a floating jig head, this one. Uh, very, very light. Again, if you wanted to do sort of surface stuff, that one's actually lost the eye on that one, I think. I uh, know oh, it's there. 
Um, yeah, if you wanted to do surface fishing and things like that, with or just popping a lure across the surface, even just a worm, that's quite good for that. I use this for my wrasse fishing, these ones, for small wrasse, but they're really good. If you're looking to try and find a new area and actually locate where the perch are, then I would go for something this size, much, much smaller, about uh, three to five grams. This one on the end is actually about one gram, if not half a gram. Uh, but they also um, have different shapes and sizes uh, where they sit upright. This one actually, when it is on the floor, the, the bottom of the river or the lake like that, it sits upright. And that's what I was talking about, the slow jigging here in the UK, how to fish it in the, you know, on the bottom. And the reason I say it's better in winter is because there's no weed um, in the rivers. Well, there is weed, but there's much, much less weed in the rivers, so you're, you can actually hop your lure along the bottom. However, there's also tree branches in the river from storms and the rain and things like that. So you can also snag. Also, what I forgot to mention when uh, I was going through the rod and reel, I do use a fluorocarbon leader, uh, about eight to 10 pounds. 10 pounds generally if I'm fishing a bigger river um, and usually about two and a half feet, three feet long, tied just to the braid with, uh, I loop, tie a loop in the braid and I loop that over a swivel, small swivel, then I tie my fluorocarbon leader to that swivel. You can use um, small thin wire traces and perch generally are okay with that uh, but obviously you can use a wire trace as well it's completely up to you. Well guys hope you enjoyed that little insight into kind of the detail on the tackle um, the rods, reels, lures, jig heads, things like that. It can be very complicated but it can also be very simple you don't have to over complicate it. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that little bit I'm gonna go back out to the river now this is a different day completely different session I'm fishing uh, with a friend Mark Brown who's uh, fishery manager at Top of Manor Fisheries and just fishing a really cool stretch of river that he showed me and it's really really pretty so hope you enjoy it guys Guys, we're on a different stretch here, lovely, lovely deep corner. And uh, it, I've changed colour, I've gone to a real sort of green. I thought I'd go for bright colour, I had a darker lure colour, and I've gone for a green jig, uh, spiky shad. And I've actually got a little pike here, and I'm so lucky how he's hooked. I'm so lucky because I've not got a wire trace because I'm not pike fishing, guys, I'm perch fishing. And I want I want that fluorocarbon, you know, to help make it, make it simple for the perch so they can't see the line. I'm so lucky that this pike. He just hooked, look, right in the lip there. Right in the lip, that is seriously, seriously lucky. But there's also reeds around. Well guys, I'm really lucky. He's actually just popped off. We were trying to film some slow motion. Hopefully you guys saw that awesome slow motion clip. Just filming a bit of slow motion and he popped, the lure just popped out, which is, for me guys, easy. Got my lure back, but there you go. There you can, you can see it there. Uh, it's basically a green with hot orange at the front um, and it's a spiky shad. And actually I'm doing it on a real slow retrieve, that one, that's on a super slow retrieve and he come just in the margin. So nice to know that if a pike can see it and take it, a perch certainly will as well. Well, we're up here on the upper Dorset Stour and I'm here with Mark Brown, who's fisheries manager yeah, at uh, Top of Manor. Yeah, yeah, that's correct, yeah. And uh, we're just gonna basically have a little look through Mark's um, gear, the tackle he's got, and hopefully he'll give us a few tips maybe on some yeah. jig fishing. Yeah, I mean, um, I tend to uh, use a, you know, a selection of colors and sizes, um, anywhere from you know small little creature baits. I mean, these kind of things I'd be happy to use on the stour as, yeah. as I would you know, down at you know, doing a bit of LRF fishing and things like that. Um, you know, small little, these are called Vobbler Shads. Um, we've got them in various different colours here. Um, we got these sickle grubs with the, with the, with the obviously you get a lot of movement from the tail yeah. on the back there. Um, these are very effective fished on, you know, very small jig heads. Um, 
and also on the drop shot. A lot of my fishing's done on the uh, drop shot with these. We've, we've caught today, um, obviously using these. Um, and then a, a variety of sizes of um, jig head. Uh, the fluoro ones I tend to use more for sight fishing than I do for this type of fishing um, with, the, with the LRF and things. Um, these are you know, a mixture of weights and size hook depending on, you know, right down to this kind of size, depending on what size baits I'm using. So. And uh, I noticed down here you've got an orange, basically wallet thing. What's yeah. in here? I can hear it rattle, so it must be something yeah, good. Yeah, it's just so that, you know, as, as I'm fishing, you know, and I want to change things up a little bit, if I want to go from, you know, ultralight jigging to drop shot in, it just enables me to have, you know, I've got a couple of little light traces tied up there. Then I've got um, fluorocarbon to little tiny clips so I can, you know, That's change great, over yeah. if I have a snap up. And then I keep a few little drop shot rigs tied up in there as well with varying sizes of hook. These are my sort of barbed size eight, um, Hayabusa ones I use for the river and then I use these are my smaller ones that if I'm really scaling down and struggling I can uh, go to those and again it's all applicable for the LRF so yeah no I mean that's a great idea because I know from doing a lot of drop shotting there's nothing worse than having to tie no, rigs on the bank especially definitely. when you've just seen a big perch come up to your rig yeah 100%. so tying them pre-tying them yeah getting them prepared before you come out is obviously yeah and, and on a better. day like today it's not so bad particularly that's more the case as well when it's windy and yeah. raining miserable it's a nightmare, you know, yeah, fine yeah. fluorocarbon, small hooks, you don't want to be messing about that. So just to, you know, you don't have to tie many up, just enough for a day and, you know, top it up at the end of your session. And then in here, I've just got a few um, drop shot weights of varying sizes, again, depending on conditions, little clips for my rigs. And again, if whatever I lose at the end of the day, top right. it up next time, day, some tackle shopping. Yeah, yeah it's, it's all to hand then, just makes the, the task a lot easier. Now, Mark, I know the, uh, the Stowers generally really famous for pike, I get yeah. quite a few questions on the YouTube channel about uh, using fluorocarbon as you know a leader and things like that for perch, obviously yeah. with the pike potentially getting bite offs. Yeah. What's your opinion on that? Um, I know it's a tough subject. Everyone's got their own personal views. I mean, I if I'm ultralight jigging or drop shotting, I tend to use an eight pound fluorocarbon. Um, and generally speaking, I don't get too many problems. I mean, if yeah, if I was to get a problem and I was getting played by pike and fish's welfare is paramount, I will put a trace on no questions in the amount of years that i've been fishing here drop shot in and ultralight jigging you could count on one hand the amount of times i've had problems and we've both caught pike today obviously using those tactics yep. um, neither of us have lost any fish um, so i'm quite happy to do that but obviously fish's welfare is paramount but yep. you know if, if you're sensible with it you know, don't not four pound fluorocarbon. Yeah. yeah, LRF fine, but you know when you when you're targeting sort of perch and you know there's pike present, minimum of eight pound, and you're going to give yourself a chance. And as I say, I've I've not I'm pleased to say I've you know very rarely, if ever, left any yeah. kit in pike. So uh, now just uh, just tell our subscribers basically a bit more about the uh, the river, the stretch that we're fishing. Yeah, we're we're on the Seminster and Hinton uh, stretch of river today, which um, runs from. Hinton St. Mary, right down through the town of Sturminster. We're currently sat at Fiddleford at the moment, which is a very well-renowned stretch. Um, there's pike just above where we're fishing here, the, you know, the club record of in excess of 30 pounds. It's massive. Uh, yeah, it's a big, huge fish. Yeah, and literally just behind us here now, uh, Blackbridge as it's known, a great spot in the winter. It's very deep, um, depths to kind of 14 foot there. So the fish tend to move out of the mill pool and into the deeper water. And uh, yeah, it's a very, very good um, spot for, for pike in the winter. Um, all, time of year, all times of year, but you know, prolific in the winter. Now Mark, we were talking earlier about uh, an evening lure league that you run. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you're telling me about most of the time, tournaments and competitions now, it's all measuring, it's not done weighing. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the competitions are run that way now. Um, it's pretty foolproof in the fact that each fish is measured individually. So if ever you see in the magazine, oh, you know, he had four metres of perch, that's not a four metre perch. He's had a catch, which would have been a, you know, a number of fish that added up to four metres. So yeah, um, in my competitions, um, everybody gets supplied with a, a fish measure. Um, the fish has to be laid out on the measure with its nose touching the end and then it's measured to the fork of the tail. It's then photographed next to a, a card so that I know it was caught on that evening. The card obviously changes it each match and then it's registered on a sheet and at the end of the match we go back to the pub, have a pint, get the phones out and then we can tally up each individual fish and go Sounds from like there. Sounds like a great idea. Uh, yeah. it's, it's good, it just takes the doubt out because as we all know, yeah. sizes of fish from photos, if you held it up and said, yeah, oh, it's yeah. two pounds, 
well, how do you tell? You yeah. know, this way you can rove, you can use as much of the, you know, the good swims of the river as possible, um, catch some fish and ultimately have, good, have a good time, you know, so. Now, Mark, we're obviously getting towards the back end of summer now. Yeah. Um, and but the weeds, there's still quite a bit of weed around yeah. and uh, lots of overhanging trees and things like that. Is it still possible, obviously, to target fish in those areas? Definitely. Um, because of the varying sort of swims we have here, I mean, as we've seen today, we've gone from some, you know, very deep swims, you know, 14 foot plus, you know, you've still got a cover and a weed here and there. And then you come down to sort of <laughs> swims like this. We've got the reed cover, you've got lilies, you've got absolutely everything that holds fish at the end of the day. So that's when things like, you know, sometimes there'll be blankets of weed everywhere. So you need to then look at the gaps so you yeah. can then that's where you drop shot in. Really, definitely yeah. yeah you can put your little drop shot down those gaps make the most of it you know we've we've been on the mill pool today where you know it's very very shallow as well you know a few inches in places but we, there's fish there there's yeah. chubs so again surface layers and things like that so there's ways around fishing all the swims here and and as as we've seen there's good variation yeah. of different types of swim here so it's quite testing from that point of view if you want to get amongst the fish yeah now Mark, just tell me a little bit more about kind of the average stand for perch and things, you know, what's the best kind of catches they've had in matches? Yeah, I like mean, that. there are big perch through it. I mean, I believe, you know, the record's in excess of three pounds, but they're, they're few and far between. Even in, throughout my competitions, um, there wasn't a perch of two pounds caught. Um, I believe 30 odd centimetres was the biggest fish. So pound and a half, that yeah. sort of stat. There's lots of, you know, wasps as people call them yeah, now, plenty yeah. of those. And, and a lot of fish around the pound kind of mark, but... You know, from the very swim that we're in now, uh, one of the matches was uh, one with over four metres of perch. Really? Um, yeah, that, you know, that <laughs> guy had a busy night. That was yeah. all on the drop shot. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's, that's you know, let's say, that's well achievable if you're prepared yeah. to scale down and you can find the shoal of fish. Yeah. Um, we found today, obviously, a bit more uh, scarce and spread out, but you get on that shoal and, you know, there's some serious perch to be caught here. I used to 